I'm, I'm a huge believer that agencies have to, you have to have a thing and you have to have a way. So we're the blank agency. It's got to be like that. Like you get one thing. I don't get right. two things. I don't get three things. Like what's the one thing uh, that we want, you know, to stick in people's brains about us? And then how do you do that? How do you deliver on that? Hello, everyone. This is Lee McKnight, Jr., the VP of Sales for RSWUS. We are an outsourced business development firm that works with ad agencies of all types. And this is Cut to the Chase. It's our interview series that delivers brief but impactful views from ad agency principals and new business leaders on growth strategies and the challenges that come with it in today's weird, evolving landscape. Jeff Graham, President and CMO at Cactus. Welcome. How are you, sir? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me, Lee. Yeah, it's awesome to have you here, man. Um, let's kick it off. So just okay, some context. You all are in Denver? Yes. Okay, yep. awesome. And so I think just for the audience, uh, I would point out that a little something Jeff and I share, it wasn't our very first interaction. I think our very first interaction, I tried to sell you. <laughs> well, I should point out. But, um, <laughs> but I had posted on LinkedIn, my son and I went to an Iron Maiden show in 2018 i want to say you know well decades into their career if folks watching don't know that band from england jeff and i realized we share a love of early heavy metal and maybe you like the later stuff yeah. too but i certainly love that genre yeah there's gr there's great lessons in that stuff I, i've got van halen stuff uh yeah. behind, behind me and love you know it. there's the, the classic like brown m m's story that <laughs> right if you, if you haven't looked that up, look it up. Van Halen, you know, Brown M&M story. It's a, it's a great lesson from rock and roll on like having it a, is. a detail or the importance of a detail orientation. Oh, I'm actually going to steal that from you. I've never used it for some content. Read, uh, the, read the contract. Read the contract. I know the story. <laughs> I love it. So with that, I'm going to ask you our first question. <laughs> I'm excited to see how this goes. Uh, you weren't prepared because I didn't tell you I was going to do it. But uh, we, we do this with folks. And so the, the question is, would you rather listen to Dawkins' entire catalog on a loop for 12 hours straight or answer an RFP? Uh, oh, you know, uh, no, no question. Probably listen to Dawkins. Yeah, uh, I will tell you that I do not like Dokken. Yeah, uh, and I would—I was like, Craig was asking me, does, but do you, does he? I'm like, oh, we're gonna find out. Yeah, <laughs> breaking the chains, you know. It's oh good, yeah, that's a good song actually. <laughs> it's a good—it's a good track. Um, it is. George Lynch is a great guitar player, but once they got into like the Freddy Krueger soundtrack stuff, <laughs> and just the hair metal. There's a couple of good bands. That's not my jam. It's coming but, okay. back. It's, okay. it's, uh, it's accidentally on, we're accidentally on trend, my friend. I love it. So this is episode seven and only two people have said they'd rather answer the RFP and they are masochists. So yeah, let no them thing. do their thing. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I love it. We've broken the ice. All right. So let's get into this. We're going to certainly talk about cactus, but for folks watching, would love for you to give us just a brief bit about your background. You've worked in several really storied agencies prior to cactus. Tell us yeah. a little bit about where you, where you come from, if you will. Yeah, I'm from the Midwest. Um, grew up in St. Louis, Missouri, and uh, was lucky enough that my first job was in the St. Louis office of TBWA, um, which I, I don't think a lot of people would think that an agency like TBWA would have an office in St. Louis. Right. But, the T in TBWA is a guy named Bill Tregos. He okay. went to a very amazing uh, university in St. Louis called Washington University. Uh, great school, great medical school. Sure. Uh, and just vowed that the agency that bore his initial would have, even if it's a service office, there would be some office there. In well, that's St. cool. Louis. 
So there was a presence of TBWA there. And of course, in 1995, the TBWA Shiat Day merger happened. So my first job in the early 90s was at TBWA Shiat Day in St. Louis. Um, then some friends I worked with there struck out and started a, a little creative boutique called Core. Um, and I worked there, kind of first account person there, and helped them build that place up for about 10 years. Then okay. I went across town to, this is another believe it or not thing, but Arnold had, Saw that. Yeah. had an office in St. Louis. They really had a, they really just acquired an agency oh, okay. in that town that had a whole portfolio of Brown Foreman spirits brands. So the job I took was to go manage all these uh, spirits brands, including Jack Daniels, Tennessee whiskey, did that for a bit. And then uh, got a call from uh, the good folks at CPB about opening a Colorado uh, outpost, basically a new headquarters for that agency. And that's what brought me out here in 2006. Did okay, that there you go. Seven years during the kind of crazy agency of the decade, decade that decade. Yeah. You know, uh, the all the sort of all the stories you know about the agency. Like you know, I feel like I was lucky enough to sort of be there, like when that stuff happened, not when the agency was kind of in its other phases. Or right. Like what it is, what it is today. So. I kind of want to have a second episode where we just talk about that. <laughs> You're probably not allowed to talk about it. <laughs> no, it, <laughs> it would was, be pretty. It, it was great. I mean, it was. No, I bet it was awesome. One of the most formative experiences sure. in my career, and I feel like pretty much everything I've gotten to do since then is largely because I work there at at that time with those that amazing collection of people at that right. at that moment. Um, so I did, after that, get an opportunity to go start an agency in Boulder, a little creative boutique with some friends called Grenadier. Uh, and we did that in partnership with Barclay, uh, which is uh, an agency that everybody knows about, four or 500 person agency out of sure. Kansas City. Um, and so between Grenadier and Barclay, at one point we just became a Colorado office of Barclay. That was about eight years uh, that I spent doing that. And then I joined Cactus in March of 2020 because what better month and year <laughs> to start a new job than right. when the jaws of a global pandemic are just closing down on on all of us. That seemed like a good idea at the time. And right. <laughs> uh, so here, here I am like in my, in my fourth year, year here at, uh, at, at, at Cactus, but, um, yeah, I love yeah. that, that pedigree, man. It's, that's it's been awesome. a while. It's been a wild ride. <laughs> I bet. Good Lord. Yeah. That, so that's fantastic. So that's some great framework there. Um, so let's go back to Cactus itself. Yeah. Um, founded in 1990, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And yeah. staff wise, how, how big are you all today? We are, we're a 60 person agency. Okay. Um, so, you know, Certainly not a you know not a big agency, but we we are full service. So uh, every I think all the requisite capabilities you would expect from uh, a lead agency: brand strategy, research, integrated creative. We have a separate design team uh, within that creative group. Uh, great strategic comms planning capabilities and performance media, digital strategy and experience and. Uh, data analytics. So, um, you know, I feel like for a relatively small agency, we, we, we punch above our weight with a full service offering. Yeah. I will tell you, you all seem bigger. Like when you just go to your site, for example, mm -hmm. I actually thought you were bigger. So that's, that's, that's really cool. And, and you know, you're, it's not like you're small, but, um, yeah. I think that's, that's a great size, quite frankly. Um, yeah, I, cool. I love it. It's, uh, I yeah. think it's kind of a Goldilocks size. It's not too big. It's not too small. It's just right. right. <laughs> exactly. We, we can still sort of be scrappy and agile and nimble and do some of those like, well, hey, yeah, let's do that project, right? Yeah. Like things that you get to a certain size and it's just, you can't, it doesn't pencil out. You can't do it. Can't um, do it, right. We can, we can still do those things. And I love it because the agency was founded, as you mentioned, in 1990, 
uh, by our still very active founder and CEO, a guy named Joe Conrad at the ripe old right. age of 26. Wow. Uh, told his boss to take this job and shove it. And he, <laughs> and, Johnny Paycheck. he and yeah. two, uh, <laughs> two coworkers struck out to start an agency where they only worked for causes, nonprofits, um, okay. foundations and brands that help people thrive in their lives and make the world a better place. If all they did was just make and sell stuff, that was not of interest to them. Okay. So we call the clients that we work with Thrive Brands. And yes. that's kind of been the founding, you know, mission, the North Star of the agency. It still guides us today in the new right. business decisions that, uh, that we make. So I love that we're still of a size that, you know, we're, working with a nonprofit up in Summit County, which is a mountain community here where a lot of the ski resorts are. Um, cool. uh, we've helped them previously uh, with a campaign to like destigmatize mental health services. Now we're working with them on the problem of alcoholism uh, oh, wow. in mountain communities, which kind of has its own flavor with that the sort of sure. vibe and uh, the, the economy of, of those ski communities, um, it's, you know, it's a real, it's a real problem that needed a, a public awareness campaign. So I think oh, if wow. we have a certain size, like we, we just, we would get approached by a nonprofit like that and we just wouldn't be able to do it, you know? Hmm. Um, right. but, uh, we just, we really love, uh, not only working with the large scale clients that we get to work with, sure in the verticals that, that we're good at, but also to really stick to that, that founding mission of helping those organizations that, you know, just are, are doing something really awesome in the world. And, you know, how can we use breakthrough communications and media smarts and all that good stuff to, to help them show up in a way that seems a lot bigger than yeah. they actually are and do meaningful work that has a, a big impact in the world. I love that. And you said several things that we're going to touch on here during this interview. So I love how you set the stage here. And so let's, you know, what I, what I want to talk about next, and I want to encourage agency folks watching, and I know you, you're well aware of this, Jeff, but, you know, a lot of firms will struggle with uh, positioning, but more specifically in terms of the verticals they're going after. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you have the folks that are more horizontally positioned, right, where they're going after numerous verticals and then mm -hmm. ones that more vertically and I, what I would encourage folks to do is if you're struggling with okay we have more than two verticals you know or, or, or just the one to go to Cactus's site because I think they do a really nice job if you go to the about us page and we'll put all these links in the description and you can see their practice areas I love what you all have done and you have these five areas where if any prospect goes there they're gonna know immediately everything about those practice areas so kudos and I, I want folks to go there if you all are at all struggling with that but so what you'll see when you go to that site is behavioral health and healthcare, CPG and retail, financial services, education, travel and tourism. So now I'm actually going to ask you a question, but from a business development standpoint, yeah. how do you all structure which of those you go after? I mean, is it formal and, and you're kind of evenly going after each of those or is it more organic and it's, it's, it's the work that, that you get in that comes in or that you're pursuing is in any one of those at any given time? Yeah. I think the answer is probably the same for most agencies. It's a little bit of both. And most of what agencies get is, you know, inbound. It's what comes in. Sure. And uh, it's based on uh, what you're what you're known for and candidly what you have a right to win, you know. And so we I like that. We're very selective about, you know, whether it's three, four or five verticals, whatever agencies are thinking about, you really need to have three plus just like amazing case studies that have shown you've just obliterated the problem that that Hallelujah. has yes. to solve. I've done it not once, twice. I've done it four or five times. Yes. Or if I don't have that, maybe it's I've got a couple of those and I might have perhaps I've got an example where I've helped a client like age down their core customer. They've got a really old 
uh, client they're trying to connect with, say, like Gen X and millennials, millennials who are parents. Yeah. Uh, but you've, you've got to have, I think, numerous examples of where we this isn't our first rodeo. And right. that's, that's what that's based on. So we definitely get a lot of inbound just because we're, we're known for those areas. But to your question about outbound, we definitely do outbound and we try to do it in a way that's, you know, not, not spamming people who don't know us. But I think the way we think about it is helping people who don't know us find us. Okay. So we have quarterly thought leadership content that gets pushed out that's tailored to those verticals. And we do that in collaboration with our strategy team. Um, it drives people directly from those emails into a vertical landing page. So if it's for a bank, if it's, Beautiful. For, if it's for a lottery, if it's for higher education, you're going to land not in a general yeah. website area where I make you sort of hunt and peck and find what you want, but I've dropped you in a place where you only see uh, what what you want and it's all the logos of the the problems we've solved. It's an explanation of kind of our point of view yeah. on that vertical. Uh, it's work examples and case studies uh, that have shown that we've solved those problems. There's a thought leadership artifact of value. Might be a white paper, might be a trends deck of some sort, but like a downloadable artifact of value. And then usually some like press press hits at the bottom of the page. So it might be uh, an, ex an article in like Credit Union Insight that our yeah. financial practices lead wrote about what credit unions need to be doing today to sort of meet modern banking customers where they are and, you know, uh, you know, sort of find that sweet spot between, you know, big banks and fintechs and sure. still stay true to who they are. So it might be, might be a thought leadership piece like that, but having that across those verticals. So yeah. out, outbound email that drives people into that environment. We do a certain amount of like SEO, SEM and okay. some paid social on LinkedIn also. Again, it's all meant to just sort of like gently guide people into uh, that uh, vertical page environment where they found us. Um, it, or, or it feels like that, hopefully, uh, to the prospect. And if they're not in the market right now, you know, now they're maybe thinking about us and down the road when it comes time to look for a new agency partner. Um, yeah. They might be more apt to, to think of us because we know we've solved their problems many times over. That's excellent. Yeah, I think that's that's the first snippet of, of this interview that I want to pull out for people. If there's no, nothing else so far, I mean, this is that's what we try to help our clients do. And I want to get into some of this content with, with you all, um, because that's like for an agency wondering, that's your manifesto right there, what Jeff just laid out. Now, he laid that out fairly succinctly. Uh, it takes a lot of work, as everyone knows. So it's, uh, yeah, it's, it is. yeah, it's easy to say, but to do it right is a whole nother thing. And, and you mentioned, uh, Cactus is full service. Mm -hmm. I think one of the differentiators I just wanted to touch on uh, is your belief and behavior design process. I mm -hmm. saw that numerous times. And I think, as you certainly, again, know, especially, I'd say agencies have gotten better, but you know, every, that old saying in the agency world, everyone's got a process. You yeah. know? And it's, yeah. it, they all have a great name for it. And then I think yeah. prospects were seeing that these marketers were like, it looks a lot like the one that the other sure. one has. So, but I do think, you know, if you, and if folks going there, there's some tangible, there's uh, tangibility. Is that, is that a word? But there is, I mean, this is based in kind of your ethos, if I may use that word, you know, amongst uh, kind of everything you all stand for in a way, not to make it too lofty, but mm -hmm. tell us about that. Yeah. I mean, belief and behavior design is a work process that we kind of codified in 2020 when I got here. Oh, wow. Okay. And it was really just part of my initial remit was I'm, I'm a huge believer that agencies have to, you have to have a thing and you have to have a way. So we're the blank agency. It's got to be like that. Like you get one thing. I don't get right. two things. I don't get three things. Like 
what's the one thing uh, that we want, you know, to stick in people's brains about us? And then how do you do that? How do you deliver on that? And yeah. so that's some repeatable work method, but it doesn't matter if I'm working in lotteries, banks, healthcare. First I do this, then I do this, then I do this. And this is how, you know, we achieve great results with withering consistency across our client portfolio, regardless of that vertical. And then from a storytelling standpoint, uh, I'm gonna obviously work with my current clients utilizing that method day in and day out. Uh, I'm gonna, to some extent, jump in a time machine and retell some of my greatest hits from a case <laughs> standpoint through the lens of belief and behavior design. And then every pitch in many ways is an opportunity to workshop that, that method live uh, in the room with the prospect to see if, if they like that, if they're, you know, responding to that. Um, so I'm just, a, I'm a big, big believer in that, you know, you've got to have a thing, you've got to have a way, and it's got to permeate the past, present, and future of how you tell client stories. Um, and in, in looking at the three decades of this agency, uh, Cactus really built itself in saying yes to the briefs that so many agencies run away from. So okay. I don't know where you're at, you're in Ohio, you're in Michigan, you're in Colorado, those states pump out RFPs on a daily basis that say, uh, too many kids are vaping in our yeah. state, or we need adults to quit smoking, or we need to destigmatize mental health services. We've got a opioid crisis in the rural part of sure. our state. On and on. Everybody's seen those things. Most agencies probably break out in hives when they see those come across their uh, their inbox, and they yeah. don't respond to those. This agency sort of ran into that burning house on a daily basis for decades and got very, very good at doing those campaigns, which it, it is, it is behavior change on a mass scale. It's getting 4 million sure. people to stop doing X and start doing Y powered by the same tools that we use every day for our other clients, you know, hu deep human insights and breakthrough, uh, creative and, and connection strategies to to get to get that message out. So yeah. this this place had uh, done all of those briefs, and it had been very 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 successful doing that for a long time. So the decision we made uh, when I got here is you know uh, essentially every client brief is a request for behavior change, right? Like okay client wants you to, you know, try their brand, or even if you're already a customer, if I love Starbucks coffee, Starbucks would love me to buy two cups a day instead of one cup a day. There's sure. some desired behavior that can be reverse engineered, uh, that are, that are part and parcel of every client brief. So we really dig into, uh, the, the beliefs and behaviors of both consumers and brands. Uh, to spot those uh, opportunity areas and also what we call inhibiting beliefs. There's some belief that a consumer holds that gets in the way. You know, if I drink one cup of Starbucks and only in the morning, there's some reason I don't go back in the afternoon. And a lot of those things are based on uh, just like biases, uh, habits, um, heuristics to use a, a behavioral economics term um you know dan kahneman's system one system two from thinking fast and slow if you've read that book um we like to think that we make all these decisions about brands in a very sort of logical reason way and the fact is we only make about five percent of our decisions using that part of our brain and about 95 percent of the decisions we make are you using uh, system one, which is this very sort of uh, almost like automatic from the gut uh, play. It's what it's what I'm comfortable with. It's what you know makes me sure. feel good. Um, it reinforces the belief 
that I already have. Um, right. So that that is uh, what the method is really about: is capitalizing on the agency's decades of experience in behavior change, behavior change campaigns, consumer psychology, behavioral economics, all that stuff, uh, and using it to unpack what's going on on the consumer side. And candidly, what's the brand doing? A lot of our brand partners, hmm. they might be doing something that's getting in the way and they don't even sure. know. So doing that sort of like audit, that unpacking of the consumer journey and how the brand shows up in the world and the the disparity sometimes between those actions and a brand's stated beliefs. Right. Uh, that's another part of our process. And it gives us like kind of like two great briefs of what to attack on the consumer side and on the brand side when we put creative teams, media teams to work. Um, and the outputs are often not ads at all. You know, yeah. it might be new products or services or uh, distribution channels or, you know, programs, um, you know, in internal policies or practices. Sometimes it's like how employees are trained. Um, yeah. So I think when you look at things holistically that way, we've found anyways, just some like really rich source material to to set teams off doing doing what they do. But, you know. So we've really hung our hat on just this notion of the power of consumer behavior change. Um, you know, and it's it's nothing profound or proprietary that we came up with. This is like, sure. this is stuff you can read in a gazillion books. It's, you know, uh, you know, it's all like evidence-based, proven. We're not making these sort of biases or heuristics up. You know, they've, they've been around forever and it's just, it's just how our brains work and to sort of deny that as we we go through, you know, our our work and as clients, you know, work with us to to solve problems, it's it, it seems kind of silly not to not to tap into that. So that was a conscious decision we made a yeah. few years ago to just say, hey, we're not gonna use that behavior change stuff only over here to do those PSA campaigns. We're gonna use it for banks. We're going to use it for a ski resort. We're going to use it for a lottery or a CPG mac and cheese brand. Hmm. That's so cool because, as you said, it may not it may not be proprietary in that true true sense of the word, but to be able to harness that, as you say, across from, uh, verticals and not just PSAs, to be able to unearth those insights for brands has got to be eye opening for them. You know, as you said, they don't even know sometimes that, that this is what's happening. Yeah. So that's really interesting. Um, yeah. I mean, I, I think, I think the other thing is that, uh, about where that comes from is so often those briefs in, from the early days, those behavior change campaigns, I mean, the stakes were life and death, you know, we, yeah, right. True. I, I would say the thing that this agency is probably most known for is an initiative called man therapy that we launched hmm, 10 years right. ago. And you can find it at mantherapy.org. And it's really the world's first brand and integrated platform uh, specifically designed to help working age men take better care of their mental health. Um, and since we launched that, there are millions of guys who've been helped by that site. 50,000 wow. lives saved. There's a little red phone you can see up in the upper right hand corner of the site that's been clicked 50,000 times and it immediately wow. connects the user with life-saving crisis services. Today it's 988 that's awesome. nationally, but used to be kind of a patchwork of, of state, state resources. But, oh, okay. um, so, you know, talking to clients in many ways, it's like the, the, these techniques, these, these methods of, um, of, of finding and applying insights have, you know, uh, save, save lives. So the idea of like, can we generate a 13% year over year sales lift in, you know, organic mac and cheese? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, sure. We, 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 we think we can do that. So, right. um, it kind of helps put, put in perspective, you know, what we're doing and, and really just, I think the, the power of great communication and, um, the promise of behavior change for, for any marketer that wants to 
tap into those truisms. Absolutely. That's great. And I want to go into, you know, you all had quite a, a 2022. If, if folks are on your homepage, I'll just rattle off uh, several of these. So you're named one of the drums best performing agencies. You're one of Outside Magazine's best places to work, ranked in the one club in terms of global creative rankings. You know, while we, I say we, the royal we, you know, a lot of agencies and we saw coming out uh, of the pandemic, post pandemic, you know, some dissonance and a lot of agencies just like, where are we now and how, what, what, is, what is this paradigm that we live in now? Uh, especially from a, a standpoint of like maintaining agency culture, for example, and just you know, keeping your teens together. Mm -hmm. Cactus was apparently crushing it. Uh, I mean, what do you, and this may be hard to pinpoint, but I'm going to ask you anyway, but yeah. what do you attribute that to? Yeah, I, I, I do uh, not, not to, not to keep beating the drum for belief in belief in behavior design, but I, I think no. coming, coming to that sort of, the, the positioning of the agency around behavior change to help these thrive brands that make the world a better place. And belief in behavior design is our way of doing it, I think really kind of crystallized and codified, you know, uh, uh, the, a vision and a way forward for the brand that's also deeply rooted in the origin story of the agency. Um, okay. It's an easy get for people who have worked here for a long, long time. It's like, it's new, but it isn't new. Um, okay. and so I think kind of having that, uh, cactus way to rally around during that time, uh, when we were all just, you know, we just so desperately needed, you know, connection and, you know, something to, something to bring us together. I think that, uh, that, that helped. And, the culture of the place has always been just incredibly strong and okay. in in particular just around the people who work here loving the other people who who work here that you know uh they, they've got my back um no, ma no matter what uh just this uh in incredibly strong culture of uh mutual respect uh, across our our employee group, um, okay, we started coming back into the office in a hybrid way, three days a week, okay, starting in October of 2021, which I think relative to other agencies might be might be a little early. Uh, depending yeah. large agencies, you know, uh, obviously took, took a lot of time in in coming back, and some never came back. They just right. got rid of their offices, but. Uh, we did a lot of experimenting with things like two days, three days, four days to kind of find okay. the right balance of in office and out of office. And I think doing uh, doing that experimentation, listening to employees, landing on that hybrid schedule together uh, with their input at every step of the way, I think was was very helpful. And okay. that whole time, uh, we also do uh, two surveys uh, a year, which again, I think for a small, an agency of our size, like it might be unique to sort of do a first half and a second half employee survey. And then two times a year, sort of check-ins on performance and yeah. personal growth plans and what's what's next for you, I think. Kind of putting all those all those things together. That transparency. It's not, yeah. it's not one. It's not one thing. I think it's a lot of things that we did through that period that you know that helped us uh, manage through that really challenging period, and you know still have still have people just you know ready to run through a brick wall. Uh, yeah. <laughs> on, a, on a daily basis for for each other. Um, yeah. They, they care about this place and they love each other. That's amazing. And uh, obviously it, it, it paid dividends just in terms of, of having that, that culture quite intact. So congratulations on that. It's fantastic.